So this is our first chapter, chapter seven. So we're going to talk about the first uh, section, which is going to be angles. Um, and mainly here um, in this particular section, we're mainly going to be talking about a whole bunch of definitions. So, well, actually, the whole chapter is going to be a whole bunch of definitions. So just to kind of set up the premise of the whole class. So make sure that you really understand these definitions very well. So we start off with an angle. So an angle is just formed by two rays with the same endpoint, which is called the vertex. So whenever you think of an angle, just think of turning. So if I have like a ray here and I just turn this, you know, all the way here, well, what I just formed is just an angle. And usually this angle is denoted by the symbol uh, theta, okay? So uh, this funky looking symbol is just called theta. So um, that's basically just what an angle is. So you can also have like two different uh, rays. Later on, we'll call them vectors. But for right now, we can just think about, you know, finding the angle between these two things. This is also what we call an angle. So um, there's many ways that we can uh, write angles. So um, some of the ways I wrote them right here is just theta. Okay. Uh, this can be phi or phi is just basically draw, drawing a circle and then a line through the middle. Alpha, okay, so that's just kind of like little fish. Uh, beta, all these Greek letters, and then gamma. So this one might be a little bit hard to draw. I usually draw it like this. So, um, and theta, same thing. You can write it like that. So these uh, symbols, at least in this class, whenever we write something like this, uh, just remember that I'm denoting an angle, okay? So we and we've seen angles before, um, I think in in real life. Um, <clears throat> so a couple things to know about angles. Uh, whenever we say that an angle is turning clock counterclockwise, we say that the angle is a positive angle. Okay. So if I have an angle, right? Let's say I start there and I go in the counterclockwise direction. Uh, this angle that I just form is positive. So it is a positive angle, okay? And anything that moves clockwise, so think of clockwise in the way that a clock moves. So let's say we start right here, and then we move downward. Well, now this angle theta is negative, okay? So make sure that you really know this. Um, so counterclockwise uh, will give you positive angles and then clockwise will give you negative angles, okay? So um, typically when we are doing angles, well, where do we start? Because if you see here, um, you see that we're maybe starting here in this particular ray and then going that way, we kind of want to set it up because there's many different ways that we can start. So uh, we can create a, an angle uh, by taking one fixed ray, which is called the initial side. Okay, so that's where we're going to start in the initial side and to another ray, which is going to be the terminal side. So just like how I said right here, this was our initial side. Okay, so this is where we start and then we turn this and this is where we end. Okay, so um, here I give you two different examples. So uh, here you uh, this angle here would be a positive angle. Okay, it will be a positive angle because this is the initial side. So this is where I'm starting and then I'm moving it counterclockwise to the terminal side. So here's a positive angle. Here, notice that these are kind of the same thing, but we're going the opposite direction. So this guy is actually a negative angle because it's going in the uh, uh, clockwise direction. Okay, so where we start is the initial side. When we end, it's going to be the terminal side. Okay, but still, we want to make sure that we, because uh, we can have many different initial initial sides. So um, in this class, we're going to have a particular way in which we can say this is always going to be the initial side. Okay, so first, before we start there, uh, let's look at the t 2D plane. So if you remember from algebra, we have our x and y axes. So remember this uh, horizontal line is the x-axis, uh, this vertical line is just the y-axis, um, and we can break down each quadrant um, um, or the coordinate plane into quadrants. So we say that this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. 
So remember that here you have all positive numbers. So you can have one, two, three, four. Uh, and then if you go backwards, I get negative numbers, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. In the y-axis, if I go up, you have positive numbers. And then the bottom, you're going to have negative numbers. So this is kind of how we construct the 2D plane. Um, so, and we have different quadrants, of course. Okay. So just remind yourself, in case you didn't remember, these are the quadrants. We can break them up. Okay. And I'm assuming that you know how to graph points. So if you don't know how to graph a point, uh, make sure that you um, review that. <clears throat> but, okay. So uh, this is a 2D plane. Okay. 2D plane. Because it's two dimensions. Um, and now what we're going to look at is uh, standard position. Okay. So an angle is said to be in standard position if its initial side is along the positive x-axis. So if you remember here, if from the positive x-axis, here's the x-axis, here's all of the positive values. So this ray, so this little arrow is going to be my initial side, just like how I have it here. So let me do a different color. So this guy right here is going to be my initial side. Okay, so whenever we talk about an angle in standard position, that means that we're starting along the positive x-axis. Okay, so this is where we start. And then uh, we move over, so maybe this is my angle theta, and then we end wherever we want to end. Okay, so um, this is basically what we want to be able to kind of understand that a standard position, an angle is a standard position if it is along the x-axis and the positive x-axis. Okay. Um, you can make uh, your initial side anything that you want, but mainly in this class, we're always going to assume that this is going to be the initial side. And you'll see why, because this is how we're going to construct the angles. So um, now we've talked about how angles are, what angles are. Uh, now, how do we actually quantify an angle? So the measure of an angle, okay, so how much this angle is, is just the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side. So one degree is one out of 360 of a circular rotation. So one complete circular rotation is 360 degrees, which a lot of us kind of knew. So if I say that I have uh, my initial side right here, so here's my initial side, and I go a full circle, well, the entire angle itself it's, uh, is going to be 360 degrees. Okay, which that kind of makes sense, right? Because if I go the whole way around, that's just going to be uh, 360. So, think, so the amount of rotation that I move is basically the degree. So I give you two examples here. So a 90 degree angle would be um, between the initial side would be along the x-axis all the way until the y-axis. Uh, the positive y-axis, so that's a 90 degree angle, okay? And that makes sense because it's 90 degrees, then another 90, another 90, and another 90 will give me 360, okay? And I give you here a whole, a full revolution of, of uh, rotation. It's just going to give me 360 degrees. <clears throat> so um, one thing to kind of like help you out, especially if you've never really encountered with degrees, uh, we technically look at these quadrantal angles, which is basically the angles on the quadrants or on the on the axis themselves. So um, if you think about this, um, so what this picture is saying is that here you start off with zero degrees. So here, since this is where we're starting, this is just going to be zero degrees, okay? If I move from my initial side to the positive y-axis, well, that's going to give me 90 degrees, okay, right here, 90 degrees. If I go from 90 degrees all the way to the, um, to the negative x-axis, so starting from here and then going all the way to the uh, negative x-axis, then I have an, a 180 degrees. And then going three-fourths of the way is going to be 270 so then, and obviously you do know what happens if I go a full revolution. So this whole thing will just be 360 degrees, okay? So in general, what, one thing that you can kind of do, and I, this kind of helps me out, um, is this is 0 degrees, a 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and then finally 360 degrees, okay? So I like to um, write them like that, so that way I remember where exactly everything is at. So... <clears throat> 
And this is just under the assumption that my initial side is on the positive x-axis, which it will always will be in this class, okay? So um, here are a couple of examples just so that you can practice. So draw the following angles in standard position for the following um, measures. So, uh, so let's look at where exactly 45 degrees would be at. So the way that we're going to do is we're going to start off with a coordinate. Okay, and we're going to draw coordinates for all of these guys. So, um, so where exactly would be 45 degrees? Well, let's start off by writing our quadrantal angles. So 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. So 45 degrees, well, first of all, is positive, which means it's going in the counterclockwise direction. And now we want to uh, find 45 degrees. Well, 45 degrees, so if this is my initial side right here, well, I'm going, I'm not going all the way to 90. I'm going kind of halfway because I know 45 is half of 45, of 90. So I know that my terminal side should be somewhere around here. Okay. Okay, that looks ugly around there so 45 degrees will be around here okay so turning from here so remember this is my initial side initial and here is my terminal side okay so just try to estimate it you know it doesn't need to be perfect okay so negative 135 degrees now we have to be very careful with this because remember that you have a negative angle so that means our initial side is still going to be here, but because we want negative angles, okay, we're going to go in the opposite direction. So now this is not going to be 90, a negative 90. This is going to be negative 90 degrees because I'm going the opposite direction. So this is negative 90. This is going to be negative 180. This is going to be negative uh, 270. And then you're going to have negative 360. So basically, I'm going the opposite direction. Now, 135 is going to be somewhere between 90 um, and 180. Okay? So, this is going to be right in the middle. Okay? So basically, from here all the way to here, that's going to be my angle negative 135 degrees. Okay? Because it's going the opposite direction. <clears throat> All right, now where exactly is 330? So 330 is a positive angle, okay? So you have 0, 90, um, uh, 180, 270, 360. Okay, so now we're looking for 330 degrees, okay? So 330 degrees is going to be uh, in quadrant 4, okay? So it's going to be in this quadrant, okay? Um, now, 330 degrees is about 30 degrees less than 360, so it's really, really close to it. So, it's going to be around here, okay? So, if we start off with my standard, uh, my initial side there, and I'm going to go the positive direction, this guy is going to be 330 degrees, <clears throat> Okay. Um, now, usually when we talk about degrees and all these angles, uh, it will be kind of smart to kind of think about where exactly 330 is going to be. Um, usually, you just kind of want to look, um, kind of eye it, but in particular, it'll kind of look like this. So, if you think about all of the quadrantal angles, 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360, uh, typically, if you want to break them up, you know that 45 degrees is going to be right in the middle. So this is going to be 45 degrees. Okay. So basically, if you think about where exactly 30 degrees is, well, 30 degrees is a third. It's basically dividing everything into thirds. So 30 degrees is going to be here. And then 60 degrees is going to be around here. So usually this is kind of how we break, the, break it down. So you can either divide it into thirds, which is going to be the 30 and the 60, or you can divide it into halves, which is going to be the 45. Um, and we'll do that in, in a little bit when we talk about right triangles. Uh, but let's just uh, finish up this video with this last uh, type of angles. So uh, there are different types of angles that we've talk, we are going to talk in this, cla in, um, in this class. So the first one is a right, a right angle. So a right angle is just basically a 90 degree angle, okay? So here's our initial side and our terminal side, and it makes a 90 degree angle. We have a straight angle, which is basically 180 degrees. 
uh, we have an acute angle. This means that this angle is less than 90 degrees, okay? Then you can kind of see that, okay? Because if it was 90 degrees, then it'll be a right angle. Um, so that's a, an acute angle, less than 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is more than 90 degrees. So an angle that's more than 90 degrees is going to be um, obtuse. Um, and then we have two important angles, which is going to be complementary angles and supplementary angles. So complementary angles, if you see here, um, notice that this entire angle is going to be a 90 degree angle, but you have this, uh, this ray that's cutting right in between those, okay? It doesn't necessarily have to be the middle part, but you can see that if I were to add these two different angles, they should add up to uh, 90. So I, that means that alpha plus beta should equal 90 degrees, okay? Uh, that means that they're going to be complementary angles, okay? Supplementary angles, you can see that you have a straight angle here. If I were to add alpha and beta, alpha plus beta will give me 180 degrees, okay? So that's just basically what it is, okay? So let's just do a couple of examples. So give the complement and the supplement of each angle. Okay, so we'll start off with uh, the first one. So we want to talk about the complement of the angle. So remember that uh, two angles are complementary, so let's start with the complement. We know that two angles are complementary if alpha plus beta equals 90. Okay, well, I know one of the angles is 40, so uh, how am I going to figure out the other one? Well, we can just plug it in to whichever you want. So if this is 40, what would my other one be? So this, now all we just have is a, an equation. So minus 40, minus 40. So beta here is just going to be equal to 50 degrees. Okay, so don't forget about the degree sign. So that's the complement. So now let's find the supplement. So the supplement, remember that two angles are supplementary angles if they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 40 again. Okay, so I'm going to subtract by 40 here. So what you're going to be left with is that beta is equal to 140 degrees. Okay, so that will be the supplement of that angle. Okay. All right, now let's do uh, the other one. Okay, so 110. So let's first start off with the complement. So the complement of this, remember that two angles are complementary if they add up to 90. So I'm going to put 110 somewhere in there. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to subtract by 110 to both sides. Okay, so what is this going to give me? This is going to give me negative 20 degrees. Okay, so now in this case, I have a negative angle. Okay, so this angle will make, well, this angle and this angle will make the angles complementary. Okay, and now let's do the supplement. Okay, so the supplement will be um, alpha plus beta in this case is going to be equal to 180. We're going to plug in 110 again. Then I'm going to subtract by 110. Okay, so this is going to just give me, what, 70 degrees? Okay, perfect. Okay. And now this one looks a lot more trickier because now you have a theta. Um, so uh, what should we do here? Well, let's just do exactly the same thing that we were doing. So let's find the complement. So the complement, remember, is alpha plus beta should equal to 90. Okay, so alpha in this case, let's plug in theta plus beta equals 90. Let's solve for beta, so let's subtract by theta. So then beta should equal to 90 minus theta. Okay, so basically whatever theta can be, because theta can be anything. Okay, so as long as we have 90 minus theta, we're always going to get whatever my other angle is. So if, for example, theta was equal to 20 degrees, I can just plug in 20 in here, 90 minus 20, and then I'll get my other beta, okay? Which is going to be 70, okay? And we're going to do the same thing with the other one, okay? So we're going to find the supplement. 
So with the supplement, we're going to have alpha plus beta is equal to 180 degrees. Okay. So now uh, you have theta here plus beta is equal to 180. And then I'm going to subtract by theta. So now beta is equal to 180 minus theta. Okay, and that concludes a little bit of the angles. Uh, we'll talk about a different type of measure in the other video.